Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. But this one, we are going to cross the Orosund once again and we're going to go back to Denmark and have a look at yet another beer from one of my favourite Danish breweries actually. So in some ways you can say these guys are from Copenhagen but these days it's probably more accurate to say it's Sveeninge. And at this point you probably realise that we're going to have a look at yet another beer from Total. So for this one then, we are going to have a look at their winter release. This particular beer beer is called the Blizzard. Uh, Blizzard in a beer mug, I guess you can call it as well, going by the name on the side. But this one comes in at 6% ABV and they're describing this as a winter wheat IPA. So it comes in at 6% ABV and this was released here in Sweden as part of the Local Osmoskolid Assortment for December of 2020. So I'm, um, yeah, very, very curious to see how this beer turns out. It's not often these days that you see a beer referred to specifically as a wheat IPA. I guess back in the day these were also called white IPAs. So um, yeah, I have to say I am very, very curious to see how this one turns out. We've had some really nice beers from Toil over the last little while, and since they've opened up their new brewery in Sveeninge in the middle, of Sjælland. They seem to be getting their beers out there a lot more actually, which is uh, really quite nice to be honest with you. So yeah, long may that continue. Toil always did some very, very nice beers and I do hope that we continue to see both new beers and uh, some of the older ones that they did before as well, because there's quite a few of the older ones that I'm still interested in that I haven't managed to have a go at yet. So fingers crossed those appear back in um, in toil colours at some point fairly soon. But um, yeah, very, very curious to see how this one turns out. As I said, not often that you come across a wheat IPA or a white IPA these days. I was never clear on exactly where the distinction between a wheat and a white IPA was or whether they were just synonyms. But um, yeah, let's see how this one goes and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well. Always nice to review new beers from toil, of course. So um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. So as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Toil before, and you will no doubt see more reviews uh, added to that list in the fairly near future. There's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Danish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to as well because I am very close to Denmark and I love my Danish craft beers as I'm sure you'll have gathered if you've watched the channel for any length of time. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Total. So yeah, as I've told you before, Total was founded by Tobias Emil Jensen and Tori Geinter, who were actually students of Mikael Bjergso, who is the big boss of McKellar. Remember, he used to be a physics and maths teacher at one of the gymnasiums in Copenhagen. Uh, but originally, these guys brewed beer with him in their school kitchens back in around 2005, and they continued to homebrew until about 2010, when they founded Total officially, and the name of this brewery translates into English as Two Beers, so it's literally the Two Beers Brewery. Um, but when Mikkel heard that his former students were still brewing, he insisted that they did a collaboration brew together and this was what became the first Total Beer and it was simply called Double IPA. So they quickly built a strong reputation for themselves and with the help of Mikkeler and I guess to a degree Evil Twin as well, they managed to distribute their beers worldwide very, very early on. And that's how this brewery really made a strong name for themselves, in addition to the quality of their beer, because Toil were always, have always been, I should say, very good, actually. So, but as is the case with Mikiller, these guys were originally a gypsy brewery, so they didn't own their own equipment, and they used spare capacity at other large breweries. In uh, Nurebro in Copenhagen, they had their collaborative beer bar, they still do, with uh, Mikiller, which is called Mikiller and Friends. For a long period of time, this could be considered their home base, but um, this bar has an exclusive bottle 
little shop, 40 different tap beers there, and you can always get some very interesting Toro stuff. I still need to go and check that out at some point. But these days, they've also got the Bruce Brew Pub in Copenhagen, which opened back in 2016 in partnership with Christian Gadiant. And there's now also a second Bruce Bar in Oslo these days. Both of these brew pubs kind of operate as um, kind of semi-independent uh, entities, if you like. So um, they do have kind of oversight, if you like, from Toil, but the brewing operation is independent, I guess you could say. So yeah, the two Bruce bars are basically independent breweries operating within the kind of total parent company, if you like. Um, but these guys are also co-owners in the various different Mikeller and Friends bars around the world, which includes the ones in Reykjavik uh, and also the bottle shop in Torvahallen in Copenhagen as well. They also co-own the Cool Ship and Micropolis bars and they now have their uh, cocktail line called Micropolis Cocktails as well. And since 2017, um, Tori Geinter has been the sole founder that's in charge of the company after Tobias Emil Jensen left to found uh, ETOH uh, spirits company so basically that's a kind of play on uh, the the chemical formula of ethanol if you like so it's basically the ethanol spirits company so I need to have a look around and see if I can try one or two things from uh, from them actually that was only very recently that I found out that um, Tobias Emil Jensen was not involved with Toil anymore actually um, but as of 2019 these guys now have a new production facility at Sveninge which is almost right in the middle of Sealand remember the easternmost of the main Danish islands, the island on which Copenhagen sits, um, but this has a 150,000 square metre floor space, they have a clean side of the brewery which has a large German Bravcon kit and this side of the brewery is run by Tim and this is where they brew all their IPAs and lagers and pilsners and all of this sort of thing, but there's also a sour side of the brewery as well which has fodders and a cool ship and this is where they produce all of their different sour beers and this side of the brewery is run by Nathan Borey and there's a lot of space for barrel ageing in there as well. But but they released their first beers from this new facility which is dubbed Toil City in March of 2020 and they've been releasing stuff quite prolifically from this ever since. As of December 2020 when I'm filming this review for you they've produced in the region of 470 different beers so far uh, according to Untapped. Most of the beers were originally brewed at the De Prof Brewery in Lokriste Hefte down in Ghent in Belgium. Some of the beers are still produced there but from what I understand they are kind of gradually starting to uh, to phase that out and I do hope though even though they are phasing that out I hope that they start to brew the older recipes at their own brewery in Sveninge. It sounded when I was talking to people that like uh, they might stop brewing some of the old recipes like you know Final Frontier and First Frontier and stuff like that. I seriously hope that they don't do that because some of those beers are real classics and it is nice to be able to get a hold of those every so often. There's still quite a few of the classic Toll beers that I would dearly love to review, so fingers crossed I can uh, get a hold of some of those for you at some point. Final Frontier is one that I would really love to review actually because I've heard that that's a lovely um, West Coast IPA. But um, yeah, over the years I've had some really, really good beers from these guys. Yule Milk is one that I would highly recommend. Dangerously Close to Stupid was lovely as well. Um, First Frontier was a really interesting beer, but probably the best beer, one of the ones that always sticks in my mind with Toil was um, Black Salts and, Bl and Body Malts, if I remember the name of it rightly but that I still think is one of the best black IPAs that you'll find on the uh, the market. A big imperial black IPA at around like 9% or something like that but I still stick uh, with, I still stand by that comment that uh, that's one of the best black IPAs that's out there. That's an awesome, awesome beer actually so I seriously hope that the older toil recipes are not going to be um, consigned to the history books now. I do hope that they continue to produce these beers in the new brewery, especially since they've got so much capacity these days. And it would be cool to see those introduced to new people that have never had them before, actually. That certainly would be very, very cool. But, um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about Toil for the moment. As I said, these guys were one of the first Danish breweries that I encountered, along with the likes of Mikeller. So it is cool to see that they've now become, they've now moved on from their kind of gypsy brewing roots if you like and they now have their own big facility. Hopefully at some stage I can go out to Sveninge and have a little look at it. I know that there's a cider brewery in there now as well and they're officially associated with Toyo these days and uh, as I say the journey of this company is uh, pretty interesting actually. But yeah if you want to learn more about Toyo you can check out the brewery website which you'll find in the video description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to dates with all the latest going on and you can of course check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done as well. But yeah let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then. That's quite a comprehensive history for you of Toyo. But yeah you can see the artwork on this one is pretty nice there. You can see the photograph of the garden with the snow in it there. I have to say 
That is pretty cool. I think that's a bit of artwork that my friend Peter, the clueless drinker, would probably appreciate. He really likes his beer artworks, uh, from what I remember. But yeah, this is pretty much just a straight photograph where they've managed to catch the uh, the snowdrops looking out into the garden. But yeah, that is pretty cool. There you can see on the side of the beer, there is Toul Blizzard in a beer mug. Wheat, uh, winter wheat IPA, 6% um, ABV, and I can also tell you that this one is hopped with uh, Mosaic and Simcoe. We know these hops very well, of course. Uh, mosaic tends to be around 13-14% alpha acid, kind of nice oily tangerine notes out of it. Simcoe is a lovely soft um, in a passion fruit in a sort of more brady bait um, malt base like this one. But it says on the side here, like the blizzard of 78 in New England, this winter wheat IPA will lie as a turbid white thunderstorm in your beer mug. No fuss, but fat, fruity and full-bodied. So, um, yeah, I do wonder whether, does it say on the side whether this one contains... Um, it actually does contain oats as well, it doesn't just contain wheat. So yeah, maybe this one, maybe it is right to say this is more of a, a kind of wheat heavy um, New England IPA because I would always say that the New England IPA is kind of defined by the fact that it has oats in it and um, that would be the definition of a New England IPA for me is the, the oaty base of the beer. So yeah, maybe it's better to describe this one as a New England IPA rather than a straight up wheat or white IPA. But regardless, I'm sure it'll be a very nice beer. This one is a 473 milliliter can, which is, uh, sorry, no, it's a 440 milliliter can, my bad. Um, so that is a tall boy. Um, and yeah, a little bit less than the American pint at 473 millilitres and quite a bit less than the Imperial pint, which is 568. <coughs> Pardon me, jeez. Oh god, always happens during reviews, but yeah, 440 milliliter can this one, I think I paid maybe 45 or 50 Swedish kronas for this one, it could be 55, because remember as I said, the um, when it comes to the import beers in Sweden, you do tend to pay about 10 kronas more for these, for the uh, import fees and stuff like this, but um, yeah, regardless, that is around 5 euros 50, um, about, yeah, 4 pounds 50, uh, and I guess about six American dollars, probably something like that, just to give you guys a sort of price reference. But yeah, the the system will get prices in Sweden are very very reasonable, I would say. And um, yeah, I think uh, you know we always get the total beers for a pretty good price. The Danish beers, of course, are a little bit more expensive. Scandinavian beer, of course, is going to be a little bit more expensive because of the uh, you know the labour costs and uh, stuff like that. Scandinavia is just a bit more of an expensive place because of high earnings and, uh, and stuff like this. But um, yeah, as you can see and as you would expect from a New England IPA, or a wheat IPA I guess as we should call this one, this is poured getting a bit of a runny nose now, so now that I've sneezed, but um, yeah you can see that this one is poured a lovely bright yellow colour. If we shine the light through this it is a lovely kind of very very rich yellow. Um, this one it's kind of akin to a nice mango juice, actually. Um, at 6%, it does have a good level of haze to it. It's certainly not the soupiest and gloopiest of IPAs that I've come across at 6% within the New England hazy type category. But you can see when we poured this beer, it had a solid half finger of a frothy um, white head. That's fading away to be a very thin foamy layer, but it does have a nice thick kind of ring around the edge of the glass there. But yeah, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there, but overall it does come across um, very, very nicely actually. But um, yeah, it's quite a nice smelling beer this one. I do apologise for the sniffing in this video, it's just as I say, when I sneeze, I've got a habit of when I sneeze, I sneeze like 10 times, I can never just sneeze once. Um, but yeah, hopefully it doesn't affect the smelling part of this uh, this video too much. But, um, yeah, pardon me, it certainly looks like a very, very nice uh, New England hazy type IPA, this one. Not the soupiest and gloopiest, as I say, but nothing overly surprising about this beer when you consider what style of beer it is. Remember, the colour of your beer, of course, is affected by, one, the type of malts that you use, and two, the length of the boil. The longer you boil the beer, uh, the more the sugars caramelise, and thus the darker colour you get. But a New England IPA, I think, is going to be in the region of a 90-minute boil more often than not. But yeah, let's have a closer look at the aroma of this one and just see how we get on with this beer. So yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. You can smell the wheat in this right away. Um, so straight away with this one, you get that really um, wheaty leaning 
it's almost a little bit banana -y in some ways. Um, if you always think about a Hefeweizen, you do get a little bit of that clovey banana sort of thing out of this, but as soon as you go into this beer, you do have a little bit of that um, kind of banana, like that really kind of banana clovey kind of thing. I don't know if it goes as far as saying like bubble gum. Sometimes with the Hefeweizen, you can get a sort of candied um, bubble gummy type flavour out of this one, but you really can smell that this beer is very, very wheaty leaning for sure. And I mean, when they say it's a winter wheat IPA, I feel that I'm stating the obvious here, but you know, you really can smell it in this one. So yeah, it comes across as a really thick and um, wheaty um, base to this beer. Very, very thick, almost very creamy in some ways. You can smell a little bit of the smoothness of the oats under there, but you know, as you would expect from the name, the wheat really takes the lead in this one. It feels very thick, very kind of gloopy, um, all of this kind of thing. So yeah, a little bit of banana, a little bit of kind of clove in there. It's a really interesting aroma that you get out of this one. It's something, it, it really does remind me to some extent of uh, a Hefeweizen, but even more kind of thick and almost, it almost just smells a little bit like chalky or um, or something like that actually. The wheat is very, very strong in this um, in this beer. Um, you do get a good little bit of a white bready character out of it. At the same time, you do get a wee bit of that kind of um, you do, pardon me, get a little bit of the um, kind of butter candy, you know, that Werther's Original type aroma out of the beer. But I think that suits um, what you have going on in this one. I think it works out very, very nicely in a lot of ways. Um, so yeah, this is definitely a very, very thick, malty leaning beer, this one for sure. And I mean, when you have a winter IPA, to be honest, that is what you want. You do want your beer to just be a little bit thicker and almost a little bit spicy or bitey or something like this. So yeah, the malt base in this one, I think comes together very, very nicely. So it's definitely, it is more like a kind of very wheaty leaning New England IPA, this one. Um, this is one of the kind of lower bitterness beers, of course. So it does still fit into the New England category in that sense. But yeah, it has a big, big beast of a, a malt base, actually. So um, yeah, the aroma of this beer is um, is absolutely lovely uh, on the malty side of things. So yeah, hoppy side as well. Um, with this beer, you do get a tiny little bit of earthiness out of it. That's probably due to the mosaic. Mosaic does have a little touch of a, a kind of earthiness to it. Nice big sort of floral um, aromaticity which I think is um, is very, very nice. It's not so spicy or anything like that, but it does come across as quite bright and aromatic in a lot of ways. You've got a good little bit of a kind of grassy character out of it too, which I think is um, is very, very nice. But, you know, Simcoe and Mosaic, these are hops that we are very, very familiar with, and you're getting both the kind of classic elements, uh, the classic elements of both hops in this regard, actually, which I very, very much like. So, yeah, you've got a nice, um, soft passion fruit you know out of this one which is the Simcoe all the way. Um, Simcoe of course when you put it in a West Coast IPA it comes across as more kind of oily and things but when you put it in a more New England type IPA like this one, a more kind of bready malt base if you like, um, it does give you that softer kind of passion fruit you know but you do get a bit of the stronger passion fruit out of it in fairness but then you've got that lovely big oily orangey character tangerine orange from Mosaic in here as well. There's maybe a wee touch of like a pineapple or something coming off this one as well. Sometimes Mosaic can just give you a little bit of a kind of pineapple edge. But yeah, it's a really malty leaning IPA this one. Very, very wheaty and I like that big kind of um, thick wheaty white edge, that, uh, white bready edge that this beer has actually. So yeah, really interesting one in that sense. So yeah, take a bit of time and just enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. I have to say I'm very curious about this one. In some ways it's very straight shooting. I wouldn't say that by any means this one is the most kind of complex beer in terms of its aroma that you're going to find from Toro, but I've got a good feeling about this one I have to say. So um, yeah, let's have a taste of this then and see how we go on. This one is the Blizzard in a Beer Mug, a winter wheat IPA at 6% ABV from Toro, now in Svinninge in the middle of Sealand over in Denmark. Let's get stuck into this one. Slanja, Skull, cheers. Oh yeah. Right, now that's very nice. It's actually very, very smooth and you can feel the kind of thickness coming out of this one as well, actually. So yeah, that's another solid, solid beer from Toyo for sure. It was, it's not quite from not quite what I expected. It's very thick and very, very smooth in a lot of ways. I did expect it to have just a wee bit more bite, actually, but so it, there's more of a kind of smooth and thick 
beer to be honest. Yeah, this one's very interesting in that sense. Um, how would you describe this? I mean, this, this is definitely not what I expected actually. I really thought the wheat was going to be used in a more kind of bitey and almost slightly spicy manner of speaking. Um, yeah, this, but I will say this is a good beer actually. It's a very <coughs> smooth, quite creamy, wheaty beast of a thing. So yeah, thumbs up to Toyo for this. They have kind of caught me off guard with this one, but I will say it is a lovely beer. Um, is it the kind of craziest and quirkiest one you're going to find from Toyo? I don't think so, but this one um, it is just a nice kind of smooth sipper. This, this is definitely one of the smoothest New England IPAs that I've had from Toyo so far. And remember, I hadn't tried New England IPAs from Toyo until about April or something like that. So take that statement with a bit of a, a pinch of salt and you know, maybe you guys will watch this review in a few years' time or whatever. Because this, I, I do wonder, maybe this beer will be released year on year or something like that. But yeah, this is a very, very smooth, a very thick uh, feeling New England IPA. Although in fairness, I do think the more that your palate adjusts to this one, the more bitiness it gets in the initial stages, but it really smoothens out. It's one of these beers that comes in with just a little bit of bite to it, then it smoothens out a little bit later on, the further into it you go. But um, yeah, let's try and break down the flavour of this one then, and just see how we go. So straight away with this beer, you can feel that lovely, thick, smooth, white bready quality there. That just blankets the middle of your tongue. If you go towards the back of your the front third of your palate, you do or the back third of your palate. Sorry, at the very back of the tongue, you do get a little bit of bitiness from the wheat out of this beer. But otherwise, it's got like a very smooth but also slightly fluffy white bready character out of it, and that for me is um, is very very interesting about this one. That's what I really like about how this beer goes together. So yeah, the um, the big thick kind of smooth white breadness you get out of this beer, I think, is 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 really interesting. When you go further into the aftertaste with this one, you do almost get just you get a little touch of that kind of cloviness. I'd say the clove is quite the clovey spice out of this beer is quite minimal though, um, but you do get a little bit of an almost kind of candied banana sort of thing out of the beer as well. It does almost have a little bit of that kind of porridge type um, type flavour to it as well, which is, is kind of quite interesting. But yeah, in the middle third of your palate, you can feel it's got a lovely white bready base and it gets very, very thick in the middle of your palate. And you've almost got like a kind of... I think the oats in the middle of the palate in this beer really give that kind of slightly powdered kind of quality to them. It really has a bit of that kind of powdery um, oaty edge in the kind of middle of the palate. There's a tiny little bit of a sort of Werther's original candied brown sugar thing in the very centre of your tongue too, but really this juice, this beer just comes along as very kind of thick and very kind of gloopy in a lot of ways as well. There's not a lot of sweetness to the malt base in this one, pardon me, but it is really just more kind of smooth and thick and creamy. Don't know, as I say, I don't know if creamy is quite the right word. It is a bit more kind of gloopy rather than anything else. That's the 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 phrase that sticks in my head for this one. A very thick, gloopy uh, type New England IPA. This one, or wheat IPA, is their term in it. This is a very very quirky beer, and it is quite different compared to the other um, tall ones that we've had previously. This is definitely more of a kind of sipper beer. This rather than anything else. So yeah, I certainly like how um, how this one goes together in that sense. I like beers that are a bit different from a lot of the other ones that I've been um, reviewing, and this one most certainly ticks that box actually. So um, yeah, this is quite a quirky beer in a number of, in in a manner of speaking, I guess we could say. So yeah, thumbs up to Toyo for the the malty side of this thing. I don't think there's much else we can really say about the malty side of this beer other than that. Um, but yeah, on the hoppy side of things, then in the back corners of the palate, there is a wee bit of earthiness in this one. 
um, and that'll be the mosaic that's giving you that. As you move further forward, the earthiness does spread forward a little bit, maybe even a wee touch of herbal quality there, but as you reach the front corners of the palette, it's distinctly lighter and more um, floral and aromatic in a sense. It's not too bright a floral aromaticity, it's just more kind of smoothness, but then round the very front curve of the palette, the beer is just a little bit lighter and more uh, grassy in that sense. And then on the front third of your palette, you've got that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters just kind of roll their way out of the beer. Um, and again, it's kind of what you would expect of uh, these two hops if you're familiar with them, the Simcoe and the, the Mosaic. So yeah, when you take the beer in, at the back of that front third of your palate, you get a nice juicy um, passion fruit out of this one. It's a very kind of soft um, passion fruit that you get out of this. As you go further into the aftertaste, you might notice a little bit of mango or a little bit of kind of um, maybe slightly papaya note coming out of this one. It's a very, very soft tropical fruit you get out of this. But as you move towards the front half of that front third of your palate, there's a, a distinctly more oily um, there's a distinctly more oily um, tangerine orange note from the mosaic pushes its way out of this beer and that again is uh, is quite interesting about this one so I, again I, I enjoy how that goes together in this but underneath um, these fruity characters that I'm talking about you can feel that big thick wheaty white bready layer sitting in there so this beer really comes across this is one of the soupiest gloopiest kind of New England IPAs that I've come across in, uh, in quite some time actually so in that regard this one does get a big um, thumbs up for me this is definitely a change of place compared to the other uh, New England hazy type IPAs that I've come across recently and for a six percenter it is pretty bloody impressive actually so um, yeah the aroma and flavour of this one has impressed me so far so thumbs up to Toyo for this I think they pulled off a really nice very thick uh, winter uh, New England IPA with this one. It's not often you come across a beer like this these days and it certainly sticks out because of how uh, how different it is compared to the other things I've reviewed recently. But yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel then, what are we going to say about this beer? I really think we've covered the flavour profile as much as we can other than to say maybe there's a wee bit of pineapple comes off the kind of front tip of your tongue there. But um, yeah, mouthfeel wise Yeah, mouthfeel wise, I would say that this beer, it's kind of bottom end of full bodied for me. Like I say, the body on this beer is quite impressive for just a six percenter. The carbonation is very smooth. It's got a real thickness and kind of creaminess to it. There's maybe a degree of oiliness to this beer as well. In terms of bitterness, this is very low. I'd be surprised if this is even 15 IBUs, but the carbonation, let's say, really makes the beer feel a little bit th even more thick. Um, but the malt base very very thick, very very smooth in a lot of ways, just a little, a small degree of sweetness to it. The fruits for me have a little touch of oiliness to them, they're a little bit wet as well. But overall this is a very kind of interesting and really quite quirky beer uh, from my perspective. I really like how this um, how this goes together, so thumbs up to Toro for this one. They've pulled off a very interesting beer in my mind and uh, it's one that you definitely need to try. It's not like anything else I've had on the market in quite a little while. So yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. This one was the Blizzard in a beer mug, a winter wheat IPA as they're calling it, coming in at 6% ABV from Toro, based in uh, in Copenhagen, or originally from Copenhagen I guess we could say, but now based in Svinninge in the middle of Sjælland in Denmark. So um, yeah, interesting beer this, and I would recommend you try it if you get the chance. But yeah, thank you again for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Toyo as well. We will return to these guys I'm sure at some point in the near future but in the meantime thank you for watching and I will catch you guys very soon. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Toyo. Check out all their social media. Check out my social media and I'll catch you guys later. Slange out skull. Cheers. The Blizzard in a Beer Mug. 6% Winter Wheat IPA from Toyo. Svinninge, Sjælland, Denmark. Skull.